OK, let's have a look at this centre rotary dial. And before I do, I just want to draw your attention to the fact that the meters are flickering away and the output light is lit up. Um, basically, the direct hardware unit um, meters will always show the output unless you have one of the inputs selected and you're adjusting the input. And um, those meters, when they're showing the output level, they're showing the software output arriving at the duet, not the signal level leaving the duet as you adjust the volume. All right. Now, about this wheel. Okay, it's not only a rotator to adjust things, but it's also a button. And if I press it, look at the lights on the front. I'll just zoom in. I'm cycling around input one, input two, outputs. Input one, input two, outputs. Okay. And um, so it's cycling around three available parameters, and they are the default three parameters that we showed you in the previous episode of this review. Input one, input two, and the output. Okay, now, as if you, you know, you, these these three slots have got a graphic representation of the rotary dial, and we use those with the mouse to adjust the input levels and the output level, which means, of course, we can use the actual physical dial on the unit to do that. So, watch what happens when I press it as a button. Not only the lights change on the front of the unit to show me whether I've got input one, input two, or output selected, but a little semi-transparent interface pops up showing me which parameter I'm currently accessing. So, I access uh, input 1, and that's assigned to an XLR mic input, so the icon shows a mic, and I'm adjusting the level up and down, and the dial moves to show what I'm doing on that panel. I then click again and access input 2, which is set to a line level input, the instrument input, and I'm adjusting that up and down, and the wheel moves there to show that I'm what I'm doing with the dial on the front. But I also get this representation here which I can uh, look at if I don't have the Maestro control panel open. Okay. So then I cycle to the outputs and I'm adjusting the speaker and headphones up and down. Okay. But there are other there are other functions that, that front wheel can access that are switched off by default. And if we go back to this panel and we switch to the advanced tab and look down at the bottom there are four greyed out MIDI slots. If you zoom in, you can see here it says number of MIDI controllers. So I will just bump that up to four so that they're all active. And now they're all active, look. And each of those MIDI slots can be assigned to a controller, in which case that's the controller number, that's the channel, and that's the value as determined by the movement of the wheel. Or a slot can be a song position controller, in which case the wheel is adjusting the song position in quarter notes. And that's to move up and down your timeline, you know. Okay, so you can access four MIDI slots as well as input one, input two, and the output for adjustment by the center rotary dial on the duet. So now when I click to step round, I get input one, input two, MIDI one, and I can adjust MIDI one controller, MIDI two, adjust that, MIDI three, MIDI four, etc., and then back to the outputs, and I'm adjusting those, right? So that's all the parameters you can access with that center rotary controller. Now the other thing that it does as a button is if you hold the button down, the, the dial down as a button for two seconds, look, the outlight starts flashing and now you've muted the outputs. And look, the outputs display panel um, is, is, uh, the ladder is still adjustable, but it's kind of greyed out, and the speaker icon has lost its radiating waves. Then I hold down on the rotator again for two seconds, and I've unmuted. Okay, and there are mute options on this advanced panel. Basically, you can you can determine what gets muted when you mute the unit. You can choose to mute both the speakers or the quarter-inch outputs and the headphone out, or if you tick it like that, when you hit the mute you'll just mute the speakers. But you can also option what's, what happens when the unit is not muted. And if you were to tick this speaker icon, then that would make the speakers permanently muted, you see? OK. So that's some of the things that you can do, extra features. And there are these last two little additional things. You can get those meters on the front of the duet to either follow the selection, input one, input two, or the output, or you can make them permanently show the input or output. And there's also options for your overs on the meter, yeah? OK. Back on the control panel, if I go to the Advanced tab, in the MIDI slots there, 
we've got a side. It's having trouble getting this trouble keeping this in focus, but. We've got MIDI CC7 is the default parameter for the first controller, which is um, MIDI volume. And MIDI CC10 is the default parameter for the second controller, which is pan. They're both default to channel 1. Okay, And the third controller, I've assigned it to CC12. I just chose a random value that wasn't number 7 volume or number 10 pan. Okay, Back to logic. Okay, So if I choose the polysynth channel, Okay. Press the rotary button on the duet until I've selected MIDI 1 there. I'm now adjusting the volume for that channel. And uh, if I were to choose another channel, I'll choose Audio 2 now. I'm adjusting the volume for Audio 2. If I choose Audio 4, I'm adjusting the volume for Audio 4 because all the Logic tracks default to MIDI channel all, whether they're audio tracks or instrument tracks. So it doesn't, you know doesn't matter that this MIDI controller one is set to channel one, it just automatically jumps to adjust the volume if you've got MIDI slot one assigned to the duet for whichever selected track you've got. If I were to press the rotary encoder again as a button so I've got MIDI two slot which is set to CC10 pan, I can then just, it then is adjusting the pan of the selected track like that you see. If I go back up to the, the instrument two polysynth channel I'm adjusting its pan, simple as that. OK, now I'll step down to MIDI 3 on the duet all right, by pressing the rotary encoder again. And I've assigned that to CC12. OK, let's look at this um, ESP track there. OK, I've turned the read, the automation control read off because I've got some controller moves added already. So I've turned it off so those controller moves don't override what the duet's doing. So we've shown volume and pan working. And now if I look down, I've opened up some child tracks for the ESP. All right. The first child track here is Auxiliary Send 1. All right. Now, what I need to do is go to Logic Preferences, Automation, and this box pops up here. All right. Now, this box has a slot at the bottom here, Automation Quick Access, which allows you, the idea being that if you've only got a, a, a mod wheel set on your keyboard, you can assign that mod wheel as your general MIDI controller for Automation Quick Access, and that MIDI controller is selected every time you choose a parameter, and it controls the selected parameter in Logic. So I switch my Automation Quick Access on, and I click Learn Message. I then rotate the Duet's wheel with slot 3 already selected and Logic has learned that controller it says assignment learned. I then click done get this preferences out of the way and now with this um, ESP child track set to the auxiliary send 1 um, if you look down at its channel strip just get that a little bit closer right if I now rotate the duet as soon as it arrives at the value that's already on the timeline, you know, on the on the arrange page, it starts adjusting the auxiliary send. Can you see that going up and down? It's a bit hard to see. Just over there, right? Alright, so now I'm adjusting the send. If I go to the next child track, which is the ESP's cutoff, there, that's assigned to cut off. There are some moves added already, but as I said, I've turned off the, the read. And then we look over at the actual synth itself as I start adjusting MIDI 3. As soon as it arrives at the value that's currently um, on the synth, you can see it starts adjusting the cutoff. And if I go to the next child track here, which is resonance for the ESP, and then go back, and there are no controllers uh, nodes assigned in to resonance at the moment, right? So go back to the synth, we go, rotate the dial, and if I go all the way down the bottom, because resonance at the moment is set to zero it then picks up the value and starts to adjust the resonance right? You can actually see the resonance line going up and down there because currently there is no nodes added so I'm just adjusting the overall resonance level of the synth right? and if it's, you know, if Logic's put into write mode you can use this to write automation data in of course. Okay, so that's how those rotary controls work uh, in terms of being a MIDI controller and it's just a brilliant addition, absolutely brilliant having that ability to just, you know, get at least some extra controllers, right? I mean, fantastic.